Five Minute Mystery by the DSVK family. Remember rounding rules? Sometimes we round up to the nearest 10, but sometimes we round down to zero. Rounding down is a loss for numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, but luckily it's a gain for numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Wait, one of these things is not like the other, and that is totally unbalanced. Why should four numbers lose so five numbers can win? The problem lies in the illusion of 10 numbers. When we acknowledge that there are only nine numbers, the imbalance and the illusion both vanish. So it is true, there are only nine numbers, but why nine? Why not eight? What is so special about nine? I mean, yes, it acts like the mirror upgrade, turning two into 11, which gives us a two on the next level. But that happens because it's the last number in the sequence, right? I mean, if seven was last, wouldn't seven have the ability instead of nine? The position of being last, mathematically speaking, is the equivalent of being a minus one in the sequence. The last number will always take one from another number and add it to the next level. That is how two becomes 11, even though we still know it's a two. The mirror upgrade ability has nothing to do with actual value and everything to do with placement in a sequence. So the real question is, why does our number value climb up to nine? Did you notice that while we were discussing rounding rules, an even amount of numbers is unbalanced? That's crazy, right? Looking at our two hands of five fingers each, 10 looks very balanced. Or does it? If we look closely, the line of symmetry or balancing point for 10 fingers happens between the hands and not on an actual finger. That empty space, although empty, does still exist, so technically the number set has 11. Starting from the outside and counting in, we have 1 and 9, 2 and 8, 3 and 7, 4 and 6, and finally 5. This means that 5 is the line of symmetry, our balancing point. 1 is the beginning and nine is the end. One, five, and nine. There is something so oddly familiar about this grouping of numbers. But right now, it's time to count. One, what is one? One is a starting point, a beginning. But it's also like an anchor, a fixed spot or a location, grounded. Two, what is it? Two is the ability to reach. Where? Anywhere away from one, it forms a line, a direction, a vector. Three. Whoa. Three makes one and two a stable form, a triangle. Now they're balanced and completely connected. Four. Wait. Don't break the triangle. We worked so hard to make it. Let's move it. Since we rock forward, let's roll back. Five. Hey, it's two again. Only it gets to be first in the triangle this time. My two, you are looking all grown up in a number five. Six. Hey, it's three again, but you're second this time. If this pattern continues, you'll be first one of these days. Seven. Wow, it took a really long time for one to come back around. Guess that's the cost of being first, huh, bro? Eight. Again, we're going to twist counterclockwise. To keep this pattern on track, we'll bring it back. No slack. Nine. Huh, look at that. Number three, you made it. It's your turn to be first, and you are looking mighty nice in a number nine. These are the complete numbers. But the pattern isn't completed yet. We have to finish it. Ten. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised to see the number one here. After all, 10 is number one on the next level. 11. 
Yeah, you would be the number two, wouldn't you? It's good to see you again, too, too. Twelve. But you aren't the number three. No, you're the third rotation. That brings us back to the beginning again. Back to our original question. Why are there nine numbers? Because it takes three numbers to make a perfect balance and nine numbers for all three of those numbers to grow up and reach the position of being exalted. And we can actually confirm this by reflecting our nine true numbers into letters. One is A, two becomes B, three becomes C, four becomes D, five evolves into E, six becomes F, seven becomes G, eight becomes H, and nine evolves into I. One, five, and nine. Perfectly balanced.